Hello and welcome back to Horizon for Ben West. We are in Chain Chain Scrape. Yeah, we got a lot to look at. Handful of quests. A what do you want? Some kind of payment, my dear magistrate. You think I can be bought? If you want that whistle blown, all you have to do is have your soldiers remove the bristlebacks and sign the concession decree. Face it, what other choice do you have? <clears throat> Hi. Savior, what auspicious timing. Might we discuss a matter of importance to the Sundom? We might. Later. Very well. I shall be waiting. So, the savior herself, Walloper of Durval, gutter of youth. Uh, maybe. I've heard many tales of your beauty and heroics, my fierce lady warrior. Olvent Frio, at your service. So, what could have dragged you away from the fine silks and wine of Meridian to this smudge of a settlement? Your saviorly attention must be needed elsewhere. I'm here for the embassy and... The embassy? Why, well, by the forge. Ah. Greater gears for greater matters. Yes, that means you'll be moving on. Once I've dealt with any problems around here that need my... saviorly attention. Ah, the bristlebacks, of course. Got to get rid of them if you want that embassy to take place. Well... Best get to it, hey? And off you go. Not so fast. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the magistrate. Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble? Bah! Born with a hammer in hand, I was. Nobody handed me anything or dropped opportunity into my lap. Everything I've achieved, I've done on my own. And where is this hammer now? The uh, burden of leadership forced me to set it aside. The Karja risk nothing while demanding that good Osram gamble with their lives out there. Someone had to step up and say no more. You ordered the work stoppage? Indeed I did. We're laborers, not soldiers. Until the Karja clean up their mess and give us the fair deal we deserve, I'm not risking Osram lives. Fair deal? You mean your concession decree? It's not my decree. It's on behalf of all the good Osoran laborers of this land who do all the backbreaking work, while only the Karja reap the rewards. All we're asking for is the ability to share in this prosperity for a land worked by the people for the people. Right. And just how much would be your share? Only an amount appropriate to my contributions to this community, of course. Where's the whistle? Oh, there was a new one there, and I missed it. I'm not endangering innocent Osram lives. I'm going to clear out the bristlebacks. And when I'm done, this valley is going to get moving. If that's what it takes. Until then, I'll keep looking after the safety of these good folk. Just be ready to blow the whistle. Still here, Christ. Let's see what that Karja magic. If Change Scrape is on Karja land, shouldn't the Karja be in charge? Who appointed you? The sensibilities of good Osram folk, of course. You think a Karja can head this whole venture? Ah! The Magistrate can barely make the trek from Baron Light without losing a few screws. So you have no real authority, then? People only follow you because you say so. Loudly. Anyone who has followers has authority. I've been with Chain Scrape from the beginning. I mean, I'm practically its founder, and its honest folk know I'm indispensable to its success. You said you founded Chain Scrape. Somehow I doubt that. Practically founded, I said. I alone saw its potential when it was just a smattering of tents and barren light shadow. I invested in the mine, convinced some friends back home to do the same, and here we are. You could say Chain Scrape is what it is thanks to me. 
Oh, so you're not just standing around and profiting off everyone else? Not at all. Sure, I make a little return on my investment here and there, but my main priority, as it was from the beginning, is to look after the well-being of these honest, working Osrams. I have other places to be. <laughs> By all means, don't let me stop you. Couldn't track that one. But I also want to check out the other things before I you know, go running away. Shop's closed, Red. You're welcome to use the workbench. Best I can do. Sure would like to buy from you. I guess it's just a matter of unknown machine strike. That's very interesting. And then the melee pit, yeah. <clears throat> Is this the pub? Well. Well. <laughs> Sounds like you're serving up some uh, impressive provisions here. <sighs> Not again. You can have the discount too, but you'll have to come back later. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oven didn't send you? No. Oh, my apologies. It's just that his minions won't stop pestering me. <sighs> now I've even worn out my special grill. Since I'm in the midst of a crisis, perhaps you could skip to what it is you wanted. Some of your food? Of course. Are Alvin's people causing you problems? Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals, not trouble. How did you end up in Chainscape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. Where there's a town, there's a tavern. I was in need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. Guess they like my food. More than ale. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could use some of that. I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But? But my special brew griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I can do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? For the ingredients. A few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in the scrounger pile, if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way. Assuming you're as much a hunter-gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildiff. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. All right. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. So we've got the strike, which I'm very interested in. We also have this, which I didn't know was so close. Savior, thank you for taking the time. 
My condolences that you had to endure all of us bloviating. I've dealt with worse. It sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely led Bristlebacks into the dawn. It's, it's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. How did the Bristlebacks get into the Daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. But unless they have wings I don't know about, I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. If you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olven up. What is this concession decree that Olven wants? He wants the Sundan to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess. Because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. Overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor. Is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Ulvind blasting hot air all the time? Ulvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. Find a way to live with him. I have to. You said the bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking then. If you learn the truth. Maybe Olund will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun. And maybe then, he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. That would be good. Okay, so we've got the Unknown at 36, and we've got the Machine Strike, which I actually don't even see anymore. Oh, it's right here. There we go. Oh, game. Reveling some strikes, sister. Let me set the board. Uh oh. You know how I get distracted by games. First time, huh? Don't worry about it. I always move. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set. A Tanakh original, straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spot. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards too. And all your boards? Fuck. Alright, how is this game played? Teach <laughs> me. Alright, let's start off simple. The Tanakh like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and <clears throat> each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That yes. there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. 
I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each mission, take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round, so go ahead and pick a second machine. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. Ah. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close enough when performing an attack. You'll be t a machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine is standing on and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. And your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. That's about it for your turn. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, Grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have... Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine. But sometimes, overcharge your machine to attack... Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't pick quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner! That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know what saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, 
before I forget it. These are all my spare pieces. I want the savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike clovers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn the game in your favor. Though they'll need the right materials to craft you. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. No, I've lost my fair share of pieces after a night of machine hunting or brew hopping. No need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. All right. It's all yours. Let's see that. Wow. You know what? Yeah. Let's do it. Now, this is actually terrible. You've done a really bad job here. It was quite embarrassing for you. Let's do this. Okay, what do I have? Oh, a lancel. Two attack, two range, though. You also have lance arms? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Ah, shit. Wait, I can only move two pieces? Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. That's yeah. it for me. What is this? Just a bar. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna end that. One less piece on the board.
Okay. I can't. I mean, if she takes one of my pieces, like, I've got no shot. So I'm going to leave that. They're going to come here. And destroy that. That is Your turn. I think I misunderstood something there because I don't. I, I wasn't expecting to take damage there. <clears throat> oh shit. I'm gonna play again. <laughs> I'm just gonna go straight across. That's all yours. I'm fine with that. Not a fan of that pushback. Well, that's done now. Fuck. Your move, Ray. Wow, ah, off the board he goes. Charge and win, yeah. Ah, down to one, one piece. piece. I might win this thing. Looks like you're down to one piece. Fuck yeah. Now that was a game. Even if I lost. Fuck yeah. Get trash. Uh, 
I'm going to give this a try. But I'm not going to spend like too, too awful long at this one. Yeah, what does this grounder do? Only one range, but three movement. Yeah, let's keep him. Up at the front. And then these guys can hang out over here. Time to get serious. Okay. Oh shit! Alright. I do. I think I do take that. Just get it out of here. Well, that's done now. You're up, Red. Yeah. You got the three. I thought so. One, two, three. What are you? You're the land swan. I'm gonna stay here. Let her come to me. Your okay. turn. Okay. Where is my knockback boy? Right here. Well, that'll knock it on one to the thing, which is not what I want. Fuck them off. You got me. Fair and square. Fuck them. Alright. Okay. 
I thought I had two of the mountains, or I would have placed him a little bit differently. She has the crystal back. Shit. All pieces within range. So everything next to it loses to health. Shit. I think we take it out, right? up. Oh dear. Damn. One less piece on the board. He attacked from the fucking mountains. And then overcharged me and won. Oh, didn't win. I thought thought it was a win. Certainly felt like one. Hey, I like that piece where it was. Well, that's done now. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Oh dear. <laughs> 